When this movie starts, the horsemen are um, kind of hiding out. They're, they've basically gone underground and are awaiting orders from uh, the Eye, which is the secret organization they were kind of admitted to at the end of the first movie. And um, they're incredibly frustrated and uh, going stir-crazy because they're, uh, they're awaiting orders and they're just in secret kind of practicing, but really frustrated because they're they're showmen. They they want to be you know on stage. They want to be performing, and um, when they get their first uh, task in this movie, uh, I think very quickly it turns into something much more dangerous and uh, and and you know scary than they initially expected. Lizzie does like um, uh, like geek magic, which is like uh, you know like severing heads and uh, kind of um, you know other kind of uh, bloody tricks, and it's really uh, a funny juxtaposition to what the rest of us do, because the rest of us are kind of um, like uh, these uh, kind of fancy David Copperfield style magicians who pull off these very kind of beautiful illusions with a kind of um, uh, with the kind of showmanship and pizzazz that uh, would be appropriate on a Vegas stage. And Lizzie does stuff that's kind of a lot of gross out magic, um, which is such a great juxtaposition to us and a great addition to our team. And I think even more interesting, it kind of, uh, it becomes increasingly useful over the course of the movie as we find ourselves in increasingly dangerous situations. Uh, and I think also her, character's magic fits in well with Lizzie's personality. Lizzie has uh, the ability to be uh, kind of brash and funny um, and, uh, and kind of obnoxious in a charming way. And that, I think, parallels really nicely with her magic. I think people are going to be uh, really surprised by how wonderful Dan is in this movie, not because they don't know that he's wonderful, but because his character is so different. Uh, he really plays a guy um, who is uh, um, uh, this kind of conniving uh, and also charming villain. Uh, you know, he's a guy who um, who seems to love himself, but in private is, you know, kind of... Uh, insecure and angry um, and is a guy who uh, you know when he doesn't get his way becomes pretty dangerous. This movie is kind of like a heist and a caper and I think it's kind of uh, perfectly paralleled to what these characters do. Uh, when you're doing a magic trick there are twists and turns, there are red herrings, uh, there's misdirection. That's, those are the kind of essential elements of a magic trick, of a good magic trick. And they're pretty much the essential elements of a good caper. You know, that you're, there are, uh, you know, kind of red herrings, there are twists, and just when you feel like you figured out exactly uh, what the characters were doing, uh, you have the rug pulled out from under you. And that's the kind of, I would say, the ingredients of a great magic trick, which is why I think this movie, in a way, even more than the first Now You See Me, I think really, uh, I think really figured out exactly the best way to uh, kind of tell this story with these characters and kind of get the tone really right.